today we'll be studying chapter 16. You should read chapter 16 about escaping the graph. So the learning objectives will be, uh, we learn how to escape the constraints of the reactive graph, the fundamental building block, sorry, that allows Shani to do just the work that is actually needed to do. And at the end of this chapter, we'll be able to understand what are the escaping of a reactive graph constraint and what are the techniques to combine and connect a reactive graph applying manual controls over the over parts of the graph. Um, so just as a short introduction, we'll look at how the code combine reactive values uh, to connect the right side to the left side. And lastly, how we can co create infin infinite loops and the final conclusions for this, the entire part, because this is the last chapter of the reactivity um, part. Um, okay, so as the introduction, so this chapter is based on um, the escaping graph, escaping the graph story, which is made to address the reactive programming, identifying the connections inside the app, and to use the reactive val function and uh, observe and observe event functions. I believe you remember that we studied this in the previous chapters, um, with the scope of applying manual controls over the parts of the graph. So in this chapter, we'll answer the following questions. What's happening inside the app? How to escape the constraints of the reactive graph? So the general usage of reactive val and observe, and observe event functions is on a small scale and the interaction in bigger pieces that are more complicated. So a second suggestion is to keep the chunks of the code isolated from the rest of the app so that the smallest possible number of observers modify the reactive values. So as a recap, um, reactive programming is used to specify a graph, depend a graph of dependencies so that when an input changes, so all other, um, all related outputs are automatically updated. So the reactive graph describes how inputs and outputs are connected. It is a powerful tool to understand how our apps work. And it's useful to sketch the dependencies in your graphs. So we'll see an example below. So this figure, it shows the diagram of a general app. So this is just a basic visualization of the app connections. So the connections between the reactive components are directional. So the arrows show uh, the direction of reactivity. So the UI um, shows the, how it is reacting with the inputs and um, how the inputs, um, the reactivity of the server and, and so on till we have our outputs. Um, I hope that is clear. So moving to the second section, it's we combine, rea combine reactive values. So a reactive graph shows the connections between reactive components of the app, which are directional. Again, indicating the direction of reactivity. When a connection is not in use, the graph highlights it's in gray color, which means the connection is invalidated. I think we had seen this in um, the last, the, not the previous, the other chapter, yeah. So in this first part, we learn how to combine reactive values, which are escaping the graph. And to do this, we need to do the following. So first to modify the value of a reactive value, then we use the reactive val or reactive value functions. And lastly, combine them with observe, and observe events in the server. Um, so in particular, we will see how invalidation caused by the user may not be captured by the reactivity graph. And for this reason, it's said to be escaping the graph. As an example, it's a request of changing the inputs made by the user, such that uh, when using the reset button, so this is, you know, we create this using the action button, which is not evidence in the reactive graph. So we have an example below showing with an action button. So the input value of the app changes, but the reactivity graph stays the same. The reactive graph does not capture the connection between the unnamed observer and the inputs. 
So here we have an example of um, the app. We have the UI, so you can you input your name and then you can choose, you can clear your name. And um, so the text output will be the salutation. So we have the server, we have got the reactive function, hello. So hello, and then you input your name and um, the output, which is uh, the salutation, so it will render text. Okay, and then we have got the observer function. So we have got uh, input dollar sign clear and the update text input. We'll see more about these two functions in the incoming sections. So to have an idea of what is happening inside this the app below, we can sketch a graph of the connections with um, one of the diagram R functions, this package called diagram R for making flowcharts, such as the mermaid function. So we can visually identify the connections related to the action, um, related to the action of the reset, reset button. So here we have got the UI, you input, uh, the name, then we have got the text output. So there's a reactive connection which is sent to the server. And then these are the reactive function as we're seeing above, and then we can see the output. And um, so here the text input is the name, the text output is salutation, then we've got the reactive connection, and the, um, the reactive is hello function as we've seen above, and then you Whatever that you have input in the UI, here's the name, it's, it will be displayed here. But if you reset that, so here we have got the action button, um, which will, the action button which will clear, it's, it's like the place inputs clear as you have seen here. Mm, sorry. Yeah. As we have seen here and the action button clear as the place ID. And so the observe events, it's under clear and the name will be cleared. So here we have got no record of the reset in the reactive graph. So it will be gray, showing that it's still invalidated as we've seen above. So in this context, uh, the reactive graph represents a static connection that doesn't allow, doesn't show, sorry, the rea reactivity of oh, the reset. Sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly. <laughs> Another way to visualize or modify and or modify interactive, interactively, the reactive graph is to change it, is to change it directly. Um, so moving the parts aside and adjusting it as it is needed. So basically here we are, we are, we are seeing how we can combine the reactive values with the observe and how we can see whatever that is happening in this, the graph of the app. Okay. So again, how can we connect the right side with the left side? So in this section, we combine the reactive values and the observe event functions. So we have got this other figure where it is connecting the right side with the left side with the directional arrow to show the missing connection. Okay, so I, I tried to understand this. So we have got the UI and this is the action button that will clear and then we'll see the gray part showing that it is invalidated. So you have got the server, um, the reactive values function, the observe event function. Um, so I'm assuming if we clear the action, the act, if I understand correctly, if we clear the action button, um, so you have input, you have created an app where you, it's basically salutation and then, so it's hello, let's say hello Lucy, but then if I clear my name, I, um, that is not using the action button, that is not seen in the graph, if I understood it correctly. <laughs> yeah, um, so there's uh, there a couple of case studies that were mentioned in the book. I explained some, sorry, the formatting might have changed a bit, uh, but so the first one was one output modified by multiple inputs. So um, here is when you have got like different inputs. Yeah. And then the second case study is accumulating inputs. 
So this is when you're accumulating data, for example, accumulating data to support data entry. Um, and the author suggested that we can use the update text inputs, like we have seen in the previous slide. And this function will reset the text box after the user clicks the add button. Um, we can also provide a delete button to ensure that the add button not to create duplicate names. The other case study is on posing animations. And here we provide a pair of start and stop buttons that let you control some recurring events. And the last case study is on the anti-patterns. Um, if you need to read more about the case studies, please refer to the book. There are very good examples um, shared by the author. Any question? Is everything clear? Um, I'm just curious, are we going to go over a specific case study later? <laughs> um, so we can, yes, we can look at the, the we can definitely do that. Oh yeah, no just, worries. Not. I was just wondering, because then I can look at it on my own time. Yeah, like a more solid grasp. Oh yeah. Um, if, if, uh, okay, just, just give me one minute. We can just go through the examples. So here we have got the example on The example on one output modified by um, multiple inputs. So this is, we'll start with a very simple example. So here we want a common text box that, up, that's updated by multiple events. So we have got the UI having two action buttons, um, one with placeholder drink me and the other one uh, eat me and the output will be notice. So in the server, we'll use um, the reactive values um, with notice, and then it's an empty, it's like an empty text. And um, so the, we use the observer uh, input drink. So we are as the reactive values. So here we are not using the reactive function, we're using the reactive values. So R, and then we pull in the notice as the text output, you are no longer thirsty. And um, so we have got two, we have got um, a text box. So this, um, sorry, let me just, so you're no longer hungry. And um, so we have this, one particular reactive value, but then for the um, the observe events, we have got two functions that are controlled using this particular uh, function called R. So, and then it will render whatever that you choose. So you are either, you are no longer thirsty or you are no longer hungry. Yeah. So this is just an example that is telling us. So uh, if I understand correctly, this, if you delete, one, let's say like you clear the one, um, the drink one, let's say you clear the drink one and leave the it. So it will, um, in, in the graph that you have seen previously here, yes, so it means that there will be no record in the reset, in the reactive graph. So these are just like examples that are giving us more details about what is happening in this particular figure 13.2. Okay. Then there is also another example. Um, 
you can go through that. We can look at the other case study. So here is, again, we want to accumulate data to support the data entry. So we have got the text input where you input your name and then an action button um, named add. And then the text output will be names. Um, so in this, we see again, we're using the reactive values function and the names is the names will be character and um so you with the, with the so we connect the ui and the reactive with the names placeholder and you input your name or if you can so let's say like my first name and my other names yeah and then uh, so we update the text for this particular session yeah, so the name and the value. So we could make this, um, so instead of doing this, because this might result, so for example, if I've got two names that, so if I, I have, I'm Lucy Njoki Njoki, so if I tend to write Lucy Njoki Njoki, that is some kind of, of repetition, some duplicates. So instead of doing that, we can add a delete, um, a delete button that ensures that we don't create um, a duplicate name as we see here. So it will be basically like above, but now instead we'll be having, um, so here we input add for the name and then we have the, in, the uh, input um, for the delete now. So this will, pre will prevent if someone enters. So if you suppose you're using data, you're using a shiny app to create for some data entry and you don't want um, duplication of whatever that you are collecting data. So this can be as a good example. Okay, and um, we'll then look at now posing animations. So this is another common use to create start and stop buttons that let you control some recurring, recurring events. So this example uses running reactive value to correct, to control, sorry, whether or not the number of increments. And remember we looked at the invalidate later to ensure that the observer is invalidated every 250 milliseconds when running. So here the invalidator function will have the 250. Yeah, um, if you go through that up, it will make, more sense, <laughs> yeah. And now the exercises. And um, and the last case study was is about the anti patterns. Um, so once you get the hang of this pattern, it's easily to fall into habits. So here we've got the server with input, um, output, and session as we know. So we have got the reactive values. We have got we are using the data frame cars, and we want to observe the first six rows. And so the output will be a table, and and also a plot. So in the example above, the code doesn't do much extra work compared to the alternative uses of reactive. So, in, so um, clearly there's an advantage of using reactive values in place of using reactive. Yeah. However, we have got two drawbacks. So if the table or the plots are in tabs that are not currently visible, the observer will not, the observer will still draw and plot them. And if the table throws an error, the observe function will terminate the app, but the reactive will propagate it, so it's displayed uh, react so so it is it's displayed reactive throws an error and it won't get propagated yeah is that clear Brendan yeah no that makes more sense now thank you okay okay um so, and then we look at how we can create infinite loops. So um, an example, it's like posing animations. So in this example, we'll use 
running reactive values and invalidate later function. So this is the case when we can't use the observe event function, but we need to use observe and isolate. Otherwise, an infinite loop is created. I, I remember we covered this well deeply in the previous chapters. Okay. So this is an example. We have got an action button start and stop, and then the output is an Okay, so we have the reactive valves function. So we start with n is equals to zero. And um, so here, I was trying to understand this up. So we have got um, R and the running, which is equals to false. But then in the observe event, we say it's equals to true. For the stats and also for the stop placeholders, um, does anyone understand what is happening? <laughs> so we have already assigned in the reactive valves that running is equals to false. Um, however, when it comes to the observe event function, we change that to say that this is equals to true for the start, but for the stop is equals to false. Oh, okay, so probably this will prevent the creating of the infinite loops, I think. <laughs> okay, so suppose that we cannot use um, the observe and observe event function, we can use the observe and isolate. So here we say that if r uh, um, and so r dollar sign running. So this particular end that we want to show it as an output, we isolate and then we add one and then we invalidate. So meaning it will be changing after 250 second, milliseconds. And then we re-render the, re the text um, as the end that we had, we had put as a placeholder in our UI. Okay, um, you ask Mimi for the questions about this. <laughs> I will not be able to answer, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> and, um, oh wow, okay. So it was a very short chapter, but I think it's because we have, carried, we have covered a lot of um, the reactive, reactivity section of the book. So to conclude, this reactive section of the book, um, I'd like to highlight how to enable one of the features provided by Shiny, so the reactive graph. And the, you can we can activate um, the reactive graph using the following commands. So you can use the react log uh, and, um, use, sorry, using the react log underscore enable function, um, which is pulled from the react log function or you can, we can use this shine options that shiny.reactlog is equals to true. Then you can access to it by clicking control F if you're using a Windows operating system or command plus F3 if you're using a Mac OS when the app is running. So this particular feature will allow us to see the structure of the connections made by the app to mind, this is the escaping graph status generated by the previous conditions, which the reactive graph doesn't take into consideration. And for this reason, the main suggestion is to keep the conditions not to reckon by the reactive graph on a small scale and use dedicated functions such as isolates in combination with the recursive, recursivity of the app. In addition, the diagram R package can be of help for you to see the missing pieces, the missing piece of a connection in the structure with the rebuilding of the reactive graph manually. So um, the previous cohorts provided a very, the very good graph, sorry, the flowcharts, and they used the diagram R if you wish to see that manually, instead of clicking the control F, let's say if you're if you have a Windows operating system as I do. 
Yeah, and uh, if you want to read more, so these are the resources that we provided, um, experimental packages designed to explore high order reactivity. So we've got the React log and Rx tools. I think we have, we have discussed about React log, the previous chapters. And if you wish to read more about reactivity, these the links that have been shared. So the reactivity overview, the reactive programming, and the mermaid the and mermaid. And yeah, so the next is about the meeting, the meeting videos of the previous chapters. Yeah, I I think finishing this chapter makes um, things into perspective, especially the isolate functions and the observe functions that you have been looking at the previous, the, the previous chapters. <laughs> yeah, it was one challenging part of the book. <laughs> yeah, um, any comments, any question? Um, yeah, just one quick question about the infinite loops. It's nothing specific content wise, but where was it discussed in this chapter? Because I know there's not one dedicated section to it. Maybe it was part of the case studies. Okay, so for the, yes, it is. This is, I, I, if I understand, um, so this was created from, we are, we are adapting the, the notes that were, uh, were created by the previous cohorts. So um, this is like a, re a reminder of what we had studied, but this was on chapter. This was on chapter, chapter 15 on the reactive building blocks. Um, if you remember, we had, we had looked okay. at, at the example. So this is page 228, the isolating code. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think it was put here like a reminder and as well as uh, for better understanding. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I, I, I tend not to change the slides more, just to add uh, some of the things, for example, in my own understanding. But if it's clearer as after reading the chapter and reading the slides, if it's clearer, then I would rather just uh, stick by them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Olu, do you have something to add? Oh, I don't have anything to ask. Uh, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Well, thank you. I, I wouldn't call it wonderful, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I, I can stop sharing. For the other chapter, I... So the other chapter now we enter into now the better practices. So that is chapter 17. Chapter 17, as we finish up the book, so part four, the best practices. Does anyone want to introduce the chapter? Anyone willing to introduce the chapter? So probably the best practices and the general guidelines. Unfortunately, it's just the three of us. So I've, I've covered the last three chapters. If anyone is just willing, and then I can pick it up on functions. I'll try my best because um, the previous cohorts have slides already we can use, right? So yes. Um, yeah, maybe I'll update you like by Wednesday or Thursday um, how I'm feeling just because being in school full time is hard to balance. But um, yeah, I'll update you then. But tentatively, I'll try to take this chapter. So it's um, best practices introduction then the general guidelines. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it doesn't look too long, so I'll try it. Okay, uh, 
So you have started your master's or your PhD? Yep, PhD. Oh, wow, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Congrats. Thanks. So you are working and studying at the same time? Yeah, um, well, I'm doing some contract work here and there for a bit of extra cash, but um, yeah, school full time for sure. Okay, nice. I also start my other second year on Monday. <laughs> oh, okay. coming Monday. Yeah, I uh, my master's has taken quite a long time because I've had to work part time and study part time, or at times study part time and work full time. So it's been quite hectic, but I am um, I'm not giving up. <laughs> I'm waiting to just yeah to just uh, complete it in and and good grades. <laughs> mm -hmm, right. So I, I completely get um, the school and, and and the book clubs and everything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially I'm sure facilitating a book club takes a good chunk of your time. So yeah, appreciate the presentation, but um, I'm getting into the flow of it. So hopefully I'll be better with managing um, multiple tasks. Okay, um, all right. I, I wish everyone a good weekend and we shall meet next week. You let me know um, so that if not, I will just have a read the chapter and present. And if I don't make such a good job, I also have to assign quite a small amount of time in the book lab because I have a full-time job and I'm studying as well. So it's quite hectic <laughs> trying to balance everything. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. I will see you next week. Okay, bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.